I wanted to apologize ahead of time, but I have a bad cold, and I'm going to be keeping my voice over to a minimum. But for those of you who saw Keith Rucker make this about a month ago, this is a, uh, a valve sleeve for a Stoker steam engine. And I'm constructing a core box out of multiple pieces of wood opposed to one big piece uh, to help minimize wood movement. I would have preferred to use flat sawn lumber, but I didn't have any. So I didn't have any, so I had to go with rift and quarter saw. Now I'm sawing the cheeks flush where I can glue pieces on the side of that. The core boxes are being cut longer than the prints. They are a nominal size that I'll be able to use on future projects down the road. So here you can see a cross section of the construction of the boxes. Now I'm uh, flat sanding one side on each box and marking it with an X. This is going to go along the fence on the machine. It's a datum point. And the bottom, I'm trying to get as flat as possible. And here I'm calculating the radius on the tool length that I have to have and that 1.031 off of a 7 16 diameter spindle will give me that inch and a quarter radius. I'm using my calipers as a gauge to set the tool length. And for those of you that have never seen a machine like this, I haven't either. Keith gave me this machine about two years ago. I've used it very little, uh, but it comes in handy when I need it. The advantage to this machine is uh, you can fine tune it to any radius you want. It favors a joiner, but your rotary axis is 90 degrees off. Keith thinks this machine was a custom made job at the foundry where it was poured. And I think he's right, there's no name on it that we can find. But it's constructed well. It's the design, I can't think of anything I could have improved on it. And like I said earlier, the X goes along the fence.
The knob on the right is a lock. You loosen it, lower the table, and then tighten the lock. Here I'm making the final pass. You don't want to go past the equator. If you do, you end up having to sand the side back down and try to bring it in. Let's check diagonally now. It's close enough. Actually, I made it a little bigger than it needed to be. That should have meant the core print shouldn't have went in there, but it worked. These are some side views of the machine. Pretty neat looking. And here we're putting it to the test. These cores were 1,500 grams. Quite a bit of sand. Because of the long span these cores were going to be hanging in the mold, I decided to up the percentage to 6 uh, on the sodium silicate. That rod will come out. That's going to be a vent. And the core box is a success. After I made these cores, I placed them in the kiln and baked any possible moisture out of them the day before I made the mold. Now when I flip this over, I want y'all to pay attention to how short those core prints are. That may have been fine. I don't know. Uh, after studying it, I decided to go ahead and make the cores a little longer and go ahead and make the core prints in the mold a little longer by hand. I didn't want a chance crushing the, the ends.
you just saw me manually extend the core print. Now instead of wrapping and pulling, then wrapping and pulling the next piece, I'm going to wrap them both, loosen them both up in the sand before I remove the first one. The reason for that is there's such a thin wall of sand between the pattern and the riser, I don't want a chance uh, crushing it as I pull one or the other. So. Okay, we're ready to pour. By the way, the day I poured these, it was with the furnace running in the building, 107 degrees. That's pretty hot, especially with two layers of leather on. All right, this is the next day. We're breaking it out of the mold and cleaning it up. Got Bree here knocking off all the excess sand. And then we'll take it down to the ash and then we'll get it out of the vat to remove the rest of it later. I apologize, but I haven't shown Dollar in this video. She's getting pretty big. Uh, she's got some issues here lately. Uh, she got a hold of a pillow and uh, peacefully demonstrated on it. She ripped that thing into a million pieces. She's destroying everything in sight. But anyway, here we are. There's the pattern, the core box, and here's the casting. Turned out really nice. Now that I know the results of this one, we'll go ahead and pour the next mold and have him set a two in the mail soon. Like and subscribe if you haven't already to follow Windy Hill Foundry on all future projects coming up. I try my best to do a video every two weeks, but Sometimes it takes a little longer than others, but I hope you have a good day and see you soon.